Huawei Technologies. Optics RTN 600 radio transmission system, hardware installation and commissioning. The Optics RTN 600 radio transmission system hardware installation and commissioning is an auxiliary teaching material describing the methods for installing and commissioning Huawei Optics RTN 600 series microwave product hardware with photographs illustrating methods and precautions for the engineering. It is for reference only. On-site installation depends on the actual engineering implementation. This material is divided into five parts. Part 1. Engineering preparations and unpacking check. Part 2. Installing the antenna. Part 3. Installing the ODU and IF cable. Part 4. Installing the IDU. Part 5. Commissioning the equipment. Part 1. Engineering preparations and unpacking check. Chapter 1. Engineering preparations. 1. About the equipment. The Optics RTN 600 radio transmission system is a line of sight digital microwave transmission system developed by Huawei Technologies. Each radio frequency carrier of the Optics RTN 600 can transmit 4 or 8 or 16 E1 or 1 STM1. An RTN 600 microwave radio transmission system consists of three parts. They are IDU, ODU and antenna. Part 2. Installing the antenna. Caution. Outdoor installation of microwave equipment involves working at heights. Ensure the safety of engineers. Chapter 1. Preparations for installation. Limited by manufacturing and transportation, large size antennas are disassembled for the convenience of delivery. When goods arrive, you need to assemble the antennas by following the instructions provided along with the goods. Small size antennas don't need to be assembled. Before hoisting the antenna, confront the height at which the antenna should be installed. Use the compass or GPS to check the azimuth of the antenna. Also verify that the type and polarization direction of the antenna is compliant with the network design. How to adjust the polarization direction of the antenna? By default, the antenna is set to vertical polarization. The polarization identification point on the feeder should be aligned with the V mark. If the polarization direction need to be changed, loosen the screws that are used to fasten the feeder and rotate the feeder 90 degrees so that the polarization identification point is aligned with the H mark. Stop rotating the feeder and fasten the screws on the feeder. You can also judge the polarization direction of the antenna by observing the waveguide of the feeder. If the short side of the rectangular waveguide is vertical to the ground surface, the antenna is vertically polarized. If it is parallel to the ground surface, the antenna is horizontally polarized. Chapter 2. Hoisting the antenna. Caution. Ensure no people below the iron tower when installing and commissioning outdoor equipment. Thread the hoisting rope through the hoist rings on the antenna and tightly knot the rope. Bind the pulling rope to the hoisting rope. For a large size antenna, two pulling ropes are required. The two pulling ropes are bound to different points of the hoisting rope to prevent the antenna from rotating when it is being hoisted. The hoisting rope is used to hoist the antenna. The pulling rope is used to pull the antenna to prevent it from colliding with the iron tower. Small size antennas can be easily hoisted to the top of the iron tower by two persons. The installation and fastening is much simpler. For large size antennas, however, pulleys need to be installed on the top of the iron tower. Then the antennas can be hoisted to the top of the iron tower by using a machine or by manpower. After the antenna is securely placed on the top of the iron tower, properly fix the anti-fall bracket to the pole. The anti-fall bracket is used to support the antenna to prevent it from falling during adjustment. Spread anti-seize grease on the four bolts of the antenna. Fix the antenna to the pole. During the fixing, do not remove the hoisting rope from the antenna. Instead, bind it to the iron tower tightly to prevent the antenna from falling. Ensure that the hoisting rope is not removed until the antenna is firmly fixed to the pole. In this process, 
Note the azimuth of the antenna. After the antenna installation is completed, remove the two rubber plugs at the bottom of the antenna shield. Then, you can hoist the hybrid coupler and ODUs, which is similar to hoisting the antenna. The pulling rope is required during the hoisting to prevent the hybrid coupler and the ODUs from colliding with the iron tower. Note, antennas, hybrid couplers, and ODUs must be hoisted separately. Hybrid couplers and ODUs must be separately installed after the antenna installation. Part 3. Installing the ODUs and IF cables. Chapter 1. Installing the ODU for a 1 plus 0 non-protection system. Note. This photograph was taken on the ground and is for demonstration only. In a 1 plus 0 non-protection system, the ODU is directly mounted on the back of the antenna. Before the installation, Ensure that the polarization direction of the antenna and the type of the ODU are compliant with the design. Remove the protective cap from the antenna feeder. Apply appropriate lubricant to the gasket of the feeder. Ensure that the polarization direction of the ODU is the same as that of the antenna. Slowly feed the antenna interface of the ODU into the antenna feeder until the four latches on the ODU engage with the four hooks on the antenna. Close the four latches cornerwise, and the installation is completed. Chapter 2. Installing the hybrid coupler for a 1 plus 1 protection system. First, verify that the type of the hybrid coupler is compliant with the design. By default, the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler adopts vertical polarization. But if the antenna adopts horizontal polarization, ensure that the polarization direction of the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler is the same as that of the antenna. How to change the polarization direction of the hybrid coupler? Use the hex key wrench to loosen the screws to fasten the polarization part in the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler and remove the polarization part. Then replace the vertical polarization converter with a horizontal polarizer. Fix the polarization part into the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler. Ensure that the arrow indicator on the polarization part points in the horizontal direction. Fasten the polarization part by using the screws. Note. Store the horizontal polarizer or the removed polarization converter in a proper manner. After the hybrid coupler is hoisted to the designated place, apply an appropriate rust-proof lubricant to the captive screws on the hybrid coupler to prevent the captive screws from being fixed so tight that they cannot be loosened during maintenance. Remove the protective cap from the antenna feeder. Apply an appropriate lubricant to the gasket of the feeder. Note, do not apply the lubricant to the face of the feeder, otherwise signal transmission will be affected. Verify that the polarization direction of the hybrid coupler is the same as the polarization direction of the antenna. Slowly feed the antenna interface of the hybrid coupler into the antenna feeder until the four latches on the hybrid coupler engage with the four hooks on the antenna. Close the four latches cornerwise. Screw in the four captive screws about 70% on the hybrid coupler and use the hex key wrench to tighten them cornerwise. Chapter 3. Installing the ODU for a 1 plus 1 protection system. First, verify that the type of the ODU is compliant with the design. Apply an appropriate lubricant to the gasket of the feeder of the hybrid coupler. Note, do not apply the lubricant to the face of the feeder, otherwise signal transmission will be affected. Ensure that the polarization direction of the hybrid coupler is the same as that of the ODU. Slowly feed the antenna feeder of the hybrid coupler into the antenna interface of the ODU until the four latches on the hybrid coupler engage with the four hooks on the ODU. Close the four latches cornerwise. Repeat the operations to install the other ODU. Note, ensure that the IF interface on the ODU faces left or right downwards after the ODU installation is complete. The main ODU must be installed on the main interface of the hybrid coupler and the standby ODU must be installed on the standby interface of the hybrid coupler. Ground the ODUs after the ODU installation is complete. Remove the nut on the grounding bolt of one ODU. Connect the OT terminal of the grounding cable to the grounding bolt and tighten the nut.
Determine and create the length of the grounding cable according to the location of the grounding point. Strip a certain length of the insulating layer and expose the conductor. Slide an OT terminal over the conductor and ensure that the cross section of the conductor is level with the end surface of the OT terminal. Use crimping pliers to compress the terminal to ensure a reliable connection. Finally, properly fasten the grounding cable to the iron tower or the grounding bar and tighten the nut. Remove the rust and anti-rust paint from the iron tower when fixing the grounding clip. Chapter 4. Installing the IF cable. 1. Making connectors for the IF cable. Required tools are wrench, snap-off knife, diagonal pliers, and file. Glide a lock nut over the IF cable. Use the snap-off knife to strip 2 cm cable sheath. Be careful not to damage the shielding layer. Knitten the shielding layer and pass it through a clamp, clamp 1. Fold back the shielding layer. Glide another clamp, clamp 2, over the cable and fix clamp 2 between the insulating layer and the shielding layer. Trim off the surplus shielding layer and leave only about 4 mm to be pressed on clamp 1. Strip off the white insulating layer.